Welcome students uh, to the online NPTEL course Visual Communication Design for Digital Media and uh, in the previous uh, two uh, lectures we have discussing on uh, design semiotics and visual perception. We did an elaborative discussion on visual semiotics, uh, what are the different uh, segments of semiotics and uh, how, how do they work and uh, with examples we have learned them. And right now uh, let us move on to more detail uh, of how um, people, how the user perceive uh, uh, different icons or photographs and uh, what is the uh, visual perception process or the visual cognition proce process. Uh, cognition means how, uh, uh, when uh, the user sees a photograph or image or icons and what is the uh, mental processing happening and how um, they, they are perceiving it and how uh, what kind of analysis is happening within the brain. and uh, after that what, what is the meaning making happens and that is the process of uh, total visual communication. So visual stimuli and then perceiving or seeing them and then mental processing and then uh, coming to a meaning. So we will come to the visual perception uh, uh, part and we will discuss that. So in this vi uh, visual perception part we have uh, uh, we will discuss about the what are the uh, visual design principle uh, per perceptions and how uh, this happens and we will uh, 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 discuss this uh, from the, uh, the base, uh, basic uh, book uh, we, what you can consult is uh, Donald Norman's uh, design of everyday thing. Uh, from that uh, we, we are going to discuss, uh, we, we are going to start our discussion and the stages of actions as uh, design aid, what, what kind of actions uh, user take after seeing something and then uh, we will uh, come to the uh, different theories of visual cognition, what are the, uh, so these theories uh, which, which we will discuss in the end uh, are comes from a uh, psychological uh, testing. So, uh, this they, there are um, ethnographic survey with a lot of people and this is a generalized theory. So, these theories happen with uh, most of us. So, uh, there would not be much variation about those theories. So, so it is better to know those kind of theories and how people perceive. If you uh, make some, uh, some kind of uh, imagery or some kind of composition how people perceive them. So uh, initially we in the previous uh, two uh, lectures uh, wh while we were uh, discussing design semiotics and uh, the theories of sem uh, semantics, uh, pragmatics and uh, syntax. Uh, we were discussing about a particular icon and particular uh, image and particular uh, photographs. Right now we will uh, more, uh, more or less discuss, uh, discuss about the composition. So how we look at the composition, uh, where are the um, focal points, uh, where are the different uh, emphasis, rhythm, harmony and all these principles, uh, so design principles what we have read earlier. and. Um, uh, with the help of uh, elements of design even with the, uh, with, uh, the help of typography and other things. Uh, so how a holistic uh, a, a composition holistically uh, appears to a user that will come to the theories of visual cognition. So first, uh, first in the uh, introduction you can see in this uh, diagram the process of execution and uh, evaluation how it happens. So here the goals are on the top it is uh, from the designers end. And the world is like when the uh, when designers are designing and give it to the world, or um, it's open to the for the user and the viewer. So uh, th there are two way of communication. One is uh, the designer is designing, and its design is being executed. So this is a uh, process of execution. So how it works? Uh, how do uh, do I work this? And uh, those are the questions uh, designers think in um, their mind. And then what can I do? And what will be the final design? And that's uh, and that goes to the world. And then the questions uh, the users uh, think in terms of. Uh, uh, the design in, in terms of the interaction with the design in their mind it is uh, is this what I wanted. So, first uh, they think that and then what happened. So, uh, that is the interaction part of it and then uh, can they achieve to the goal and uh, can they fi uh, find out what um, the design is for is useful uh, for them or not. So, uh, the Donald Normans, so, uh, these are the photographs and imageries are taken from the Donald Normans book uh, I have mentioned uh, design for everyday uh, thing. 
So the seven uh, he also says the there are seven stages of action cycle which goes uh, from uh, users uh, to uh, to this two uh, parameter one is the goal which is the uh, designer's uh, end and to the to the world to the uh, users or the receivers end. So that we uh, we all uh, will also discuss. And he is also uh, telling that there are three different uh, levels uh, of perception. So one is the uh, uh, three different levels are uh, one is visceral and one is uh, behavioral and another is reflective. Visceral and behavioral levels are subconscious, so it's hap it happens instantaneously without any uh, much uh, level of cognition. And then uh, the reflective level is where the conscious thought and uh, decision making and process is involved as well as the highest level of emotions are also involved and all this uh, so, uh, sociocultural background and every cognition will, uh, in, will be involved in the uh, reflective level of uh, uh, th uh, uh, cognition. So the first is whenever we look at something and the first uh, impression we get is a vis visceral level of uh, impression. So, without any uh, much mental uh, stress or mental cognition or mental processing, we perceive something. And then, with uh, after certain le level of uh, mental processing, we uh, come to the behavioral experience of the uh, of the visual or or the product. And then, reflective is much more uh, when we start thinking. So, it's more like denotative meaning. Uh, so, sorry, connotative meaning, and uh, all the perception and thinking and uh, reasoning and um, these things are involved in the reflective uh, perception. So, uh, the visceral response as uh, it is written is uh, at the lowest level uh, of the control of the simplest muscle and the sensing uh, state of the world uh, and the body. As uh, we were saying, there is a instant, uh, instantaneous perceive. So, uh, the process involved here is just perceiving. And then uh, there is uh, the next process is interpretation. So, after that, so there are some uh, interpretation of uh, meaning uh, uh, can happen within a uh, very uh, uh, quick uh, time frame. So, it is about expectation. So, it is uh, sen uh, sensitive at the expectation and the action sequence uh, level. And then it is, uh, uh, then we start thinking and comparing uh, based on our previous mental model. So, uh, the way we are uh, programmed and way we have seen uh, the previous uh, things. Uh, so, that com, uh, stays in our memory and we start comparing with our previous uh, experience and then uh, we start thinking in terms of uh, reflective uh, layer. So, that is the process of users um, perception. So, towards the uh, from the designer's end to the user's end. So, there will be first planning. So, first designers has to plan and that uh, designer has to think first and uh, think about all this uh, processing uh, user will um, um, uh, do in um, their mind. So, first designer should think about the reflective layer. So, what is the highest uh, level of thinking? So, uh, the most complex thinking um, and um, meaning making process should be uh, uh, first um, thought and sorted um, uh, sorted. So, that is uh, how Donald Norman is dividing the uh, thing and then uh, the uh, we should specify the designer should specify the smaller um, integra um, parts that is the specification level and that is corresponding to the uh, behavioral, behavioral experience of a design. And the next is the perform, how uh, things perform. So, for example, the UI transitions and all these things, uh, the small uh, things like when you click and something pops up and the way it pops up or uh, the way it, um, the uh, one, one bread cramp uh, comes uh, again and uh, uh, in a drop down men menu, uh, the way it comes. So, these can be the performance and a very visceral level of um, uh, design and the uh, then specifications like uh, colors and uh, minor specifications of um, uh, buttons, what kind of look and feel it uh, generates like um, whether it is um, um, sharp has sharp edge like may, uh, Google's material design or bewild and more skeuomorphic experience that kind of things will come in the uh, speci uh, specify or behavior level and then reflective level will be the total information architecture how things work and how uh, what is the execution process of uh, the webs uh, in in case of web application and the holistic uh, total formulation that will be the uh, reflective layer of design 
and uh, then uh, as we were discussing this uh, there are seven stages of actions and uh, design aids that happen between um, the user and the uh, designer so uh, that also corresponds from the same uh, diagram but um, this has been taken from the design of everyday thing uh, donald norman so we can look at this these are the uh, three actions happening from users uh, sorry from designers uh, end to the user's end so uh, designers first plan then specify and then the uh, things about the what kind of performance it will give so these three things are from uh, uh, this direction and the other three things are from receiver's end to the or the uh, target audience's end to the uh, uh, to the design. So how it performs, the performance um, uh, um, uh, towards the performance is visceral, the perceiving first, and then interpreting, and then uh, compare. So from that we have what happened. That is the perceive level, and then what does it mean? That is the interpretation level. And is this okay? So, how uh, whether the goal is uh, fulfilled or whether uh, the things are in the right um, direction or whether the um, complete uh, process is achieved? So, that is the uh, um, comparing and uh, the highest level of per uh, perceiving. And then, towards the designer to the user's end, it is like uh, planning is what are the alternatives that we have to uh, plan and what how uh, what are the different ways to achieve goals so that is the planning and the biggest um, the broader or the holistic problem solving and then specifying what can i do how what specific path can designer take to uh, achieve that goal that is uh, specifying that is um, uh, corresponding to the behavioral level and then um, how do it uh, how do i do that so that is the uh, uh, minor fine finest um, specifications of the way it happens the, for the example the ui transitions and the um, overall um, experience of the uh, web application that is this um, that's corresponding to this so it's feed forward and that is the designer and towards the uh, that is the feedback so uh, des uh, users experience and towards the product and uh, Together it is uh, what do I want to accomplish that is the goal. So that is the highest level of that is the hol holistic uh, the, uh, uh, level of um, action. So that uh, ev every other uh, six actions comes under the umbrella of the uh, what has to be accomplished or what is the goal or the product. So what designers give, give to the world that is the um, under that uh, action all these other six uh, actions are under this umbrella. So again, uh, uh, different uh, stages. So each and every stages, the questions uh, raised for each and every uh, stages, like what each and every stage does. Uh, he have uh, given uh, each, uh, uh, a terminology for each and every stages. So uh, discoverability is um, it is the possible. Uh, it is possible to determine what actions are possible and the current state of the device. And uh, that is the uh, uh, possibility. Uh, that that is the planning level, and then feedback. There is full and continuous information about the result of action and the current uh, state of the product or service. After an action has been executed, it is easy to determine the new state. So that is uh, that corresponds to what can I do? That 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 is the process of uh, this. And the conceptual model, the design projects, uh, all the performance uh, needed uh, to create a good conceptual model and uh, of the system leading to understanding the feeling of the control. The conceptual model enhances both uh, discoverability and evaluation of the result. So conceptual model is also uh, like a designer has a, a conceptual model and a user has a conceptual model. So these two conceptual ma models should blend uh, to each other and should overlap and uh, the uh, way it is, uh, uh, the more they are integrated to each other and more they are um, matching to each other, the better the user experience will be. And uh, then it is the affordance, does the proper affordance exist to make uh, the desired action possible? So it means all actions that are physically possible. So those all the options, those are open um, uh, to uh, um, uh, go, uh, go to the goal is um, all affordance. I will give example of this. 
then the concept has applied to design it uh, started also referring to only those actions possible in uh, which uh, we were aware of as we were discussing that uh, the uh, mental model or the conceptual model so in design in, in case of design an actual definition of affordance all the possible uh, paths of going uh, towards uh, a goal is affordance but in terms of design like uh, all the uh, possible paths which which are acceptable which are commonly acceptable are affordance for example if we take an example of an information architecture so here you can have a look at this so information architecture generally looks like this so it, you reach onto the home uh, page and then there are, are uh, for example here there are five options so five tabs are there under each and every tab you, you can uh, go to the other different pages if, uh, if you uh, click um, onto the drop down of each and every tab so here from one tab you can go to the other tabs um, uh, one link so they, they are linked so uh, for uh, uh, for example one possible way of um, physical possible way of going towards this this section is straight going towards this uh, menu and uh, going next and this is the possible uh, path and another possible path is following this path and going back to this menu another other possible paths will be you can go to the other menu explore and then come back to this menu and then again reach this so these are the various possible ways of information architecture and it depends the inform uh, the uh, user uh, friendliness depends on how quick you are reaching towards the information architecture that depends on how uh, well the information architectures are uh, laid and how well they are um, how, how much comprehensible uh, they are towards the user for other example you can see there's a, a handle of uh, uh, when we look at the teapot we understand uh, understand that tea will be there and we'll hold the teapot from this side and that we will pour tea from this side but in case uh, if you uh, if uh, the uh, the proper planning is not been done and the proper uh, possibilities of affordance has not been um, established then uh, there can be a wrong and absolutely impossible design of a teapot where we can hold uh, holding um, the teapots the system of holding the teapot and the uh, from where the tea will come out is on the same side so this this is an uh, design which uh, communicates that uh, this is not an usable design this is this just communicates there is not possible this kind of designs are not possible to um, deal with so there is no possible way of uh, affordance to a particular uh, to go to the particular goal so next is uh, signifiers so signifiers this signifiers is different from the signifiers we were discussing in under the chapter of uh, semiotics and um, uh, under uh, semiotics so here it's uh, effective use of signifiers ensures discoverability and that the feedback is well communicated uh, to, uh, towards the uh, intelligible so um, the signifiers has to be uh, uh, we, we can discover the proper uh, use of the um, product so if we look at a product the it should communicate the meaning towards the user so that they can use that and even the visual communication and the web um, architecture uh, the information architecture of a web should communicate uh, the uh, user and the proper uh, after uh, proper action from the user uh, it, sh it should go uh, uh, um, it should give a uh, um, expected outcome and then there is mapping the relationship between the controls and the actions follows the principle of good mapping so um, uh, if, if, if there is a control and the actions are um, coherent and then the uh, mental mapping so what user perceives the uh, because the information architecture what we are um, uh, showing user do not see that they perceive the in information architecture and uh, though we are uh, like this we perceive the information architecture first and then we work out the uh, detail model so we are going uh, towards this process and you uh, users are going towards the reverse process so they start looking at the U, um, ui transitions they start uh, deciphering the meaning and then finally they understand the information architecture of a web page so they understand the holistic uh, plan later so how well they understand so um, uh, the better they will navigate through the uh, website so this um, final processing of uh, all these um, informations and uh, correlations happen later and uh, with a uh, uh, higher degree of uh, visual cognition 
and uh, next is the constraints. So, providing phys uh, physical, logical or semantics and cultural cons uh, constraints guides actions and uh, eases uh, interpretations. For example, if we take a um, uh, physical product design, so there are particular batteries and battery slots. So, uh, their shapes and their um, signage uh, signs like uh, we have a positive and negative signs in the battery, we also have the positive and uh, negative signs in the slots. So, and also their shapes and everything matches. So, uh, user understands that this must be the uh, battery uh, slot. So, this is a very trivial example. And another in uh, terms of web uh, design, we can have that um, there are uh, uh, through colors, uh, shapes, textures and illumination, we can highlight which buttons are clicked. For example, if you look at this uh, image, so here there are four tabs. One is file, home, share and view. So, uh, with the uh, help of different color and, uh, and different uh, color of the text and different color of the background, we can understand this file button is the main uh, button, but the home button is clicked over here because it is the line continues from here and everything all these buttons are under home button. So, home buttons are different, differently uh, uh, dealt in terms of visual uh, design. So, everything has been designed uh, by a designer and then uh, it has been coded. So, this uh, in, the, in this Microsoft of his um, uh, this um, application. So, here the home button is treated in a different way, all these lines and everything are different in this button, but here in this share and view button they are different. So, this line does not continue over here and the file is the main button where you will um, look, um, you, you can understand the location of the file and everything. So, it is treat, uh, treated differently in the button. So, we can understand this home button cannot be clicked again because it is already clicked and the other buttons we can click. So, these are the, uh, so, uh, the constraints is um, because of the different visual style uh, and our previous uh, knowledge that this means something that we cannot click on this button because it is already clicked and this kind of informations are already um, uh, are uh, perceivable based on our previous experience. Uh, and another example is uh, when we are uh, booking a flight, sometimes you must have seen there are options in uh, most of the flight booking um, um, applications or web applications. So, we can book, uh, book one way of uh, flight or we can uh, book a round trip or a multi city trip. So, if we click on the one way uh, but, uh, trip button, automatically the, uh, uh, the arrival or return date uh, is um, the color of this uh, date and the uh, calendar icon uh, becomes lighter and uh, only the departure uh, date, uh, the calendar icon and the dates become highlighted. So, we can understand that this cannot be clicked because this, but already, uh, but the information is important for the user so that they know that there is a possibility of round trip and uh, so that we can have a return date as well. So, this kind of information is also given, but based on our previous experience and the uh, theories of semantics, uh, theories of uh, visual perception, uh, because this is highlighted because of the contrast, color contrast and val color value contrast, uh, we can understand only this part is uh, active right now and the other thing is, um, is a constraint. We cannot uh, do this processing and we cannot go towards this uh, uh, line of information architecture. And as we, uh, I was uh, discussing, uh, so finally, the user's uh, concept, uh, user's mental model and designer's conceptual model, uh, the way um, uh, from where in uh, whether it is going from this direction to this direction, this is uh, user's mental model. So, user is ha having some particular set of uh, mental thought and based on that they are constantly evaluating the uh, design and constantly perceiving the design. So, that is uh, that is through happening through the user's mental model uh, what uh, is already there and then analyzing and comparing the design and uh, then this process is the designer's um, conceptual model. So, design uh, designer first conceptualize some model and give it to the world or give it to the user. So, this designer's conceptual model if that matches with the user's um, uh, uh, user's uh, mental model or user's con uh, conceptual model, then the system image or the uh, the the complete uh, holistic image of the product or the experience, the user experience of a product or user experience of a uh, of any website, web application, game design or animation or visual communication uh, is more uh, is enhanced or better. So all these. Uh, uh, 
outcomes uh, it can be in the domain of animation it can be in the domain of uh, web application or just a, a communicative poster or digital poster uh, all these have some user experience so user it cannot ha uh, so user without any user experience um, it cannot uh, be uh, communicative it cannot be the product cannot communicate with the user with, with without an experience so always people will uh, user will perceive something and they will experience something and they will memorize uh, memorize if the experience is um, um, I mean uh, drastically good or it can be drastically bad. So, they will memorize the thing and that will eventually add to their uh, mental model. So, in the, uh, when they see look at the next uh, design all this previous experience of uh, user experience will, uh, will be accumulated as a mental model of the user. So, based on that framework they will evaluate the next uh, design. Now, we come to the visual design principles as uh, we were discussing that these principles are based on a lot of uh, 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 survey and a lot of uh, 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 after, after considering the similar kind of pattern in uh, different users behavior. So, there, was, uh, there were user be uh, behaviors uh, uh, and similar kind of patterns are followed in their behaviors. So, these kind of laws, are came, uh, laws came from um, that uh, perspective. So, this is uh, essentially a uh, bottom of uh, the uh, theories uh, came from a bottom up approach of uh, or qualitative method of research and uh, looking at people doing ethnographic survey or uh, finding uh, the uh, bottom up or inductive uh, way of um, uh, research uh, not from uh, not coming to a theory and then validating but looking at people and looking at their behavior finding a pattern and then arriving at a theory. So, uh, first we will uh, talk about Gutenberg's diagram as uh, we were discussing earlier Gutenberg first uh, invented the press. So, after that there was Bible uh, was first printed and then there was a lot of newspapers and uh, other pamphlets were printed during the industrial revolution and um, renaissance era of uh, Europe. So, uh, that time uh, based on a lot of uh, uh, pamphlets uh, printing and uh, uh, the users reading pattern. Uh, Gutenberg um, uh, a theory uh, of reading gravity is uh, derived from that. So, uh, reading gravity means where we start looking at and how our eye moves in a, in, in a text heavy uh, composition. So, here we are not talking about a uh, lot of uh, visual and text uh, there can be a mix of uh, visual and text and uh, but mostly homogeneous and uh, where we have to read start reading. So, here our preconceived notion of reading habits are uh, translated. So, uh, in most of the cases uh, apart from Urdu and Arabic uh, scripts who can uh, who, uh, who are more um, predominantly uh, Urdu and Arabic script uh, uh, you know, reader, uh, we start reading from left to right. So, we s uh, if in an image we start looking at the left to right uh, direction uh, we start reading from that and we start reading from top to bottom always. So, first is the first heavy primary focal optical area is left and top. So, here we start uh, our eyes go first if we start uh, reading this and then it follows uh, towards a strong follow area. So, we start reading this. So, this is the next uh, thing, but our eye does not stay there much and then it goes towards this. Uh, weak fellow area and here is the terminal thing because of two different direction one is this way uh, left to right and another is this way top to bottom. So, this is the heaviest line. So, 1 to 4 is the most important diagonal line uh, which is created because of two different uh, vectors uh, one is from left to right and another is from top to bottom. So, 1 is the most important um, area and then 4 is also heavy because from here we turn the page. So, we look at uh, what it is written at the end of the uh, page and that also gets a second uh, priority in the hierarchy and then the strong fellow area what uh, from uh, 1 we have uh, our eyes will be dragged towards this. So, this is the strong fellow area and this part generally in the 3 uh, the uh, segment 3 we overlook lot of uh, information. So, uh, we know in a, in a rect uh, rectilinear composition which parts are most uh, informative and uh, people can uh, 
devote more time in these kind of areas. So, here most important function buttons uh, should be there and most uh, important actions which uh, we want the users to be performed should be there and more uh, most important um, informations uh, in, in terms of visual communication has to be there and the least important things can be there in the uh, this zone which is marked as tree. So, here if we take an example of a Snapdeal uh, web page, here the pro, uh, Snapdeal's brand logo, the name and all the information search buttons which is very important uh, because it is a product uh, e-commerce site and we have to search products. So, these buttons are there and sign in and these buttons are important if you, you might not even sign in and uh, start, uh, start purchasing. So, these are also important, but not as much as the uh, icon of the uh, uh, brand and the name of it and the search button and add to cart is here, but the most important thing is you can uh, uh, look at is buy now or add to cart which is written in bold and has bigger uh, tabs. So, here these are the same things, but here because of this is in the fourth and uh, most uh, um, uh, uh, and the next important zone, this is highlighted and from here they will go our eye will um, end here and uh, because of the um, and also um, uh, the process of purchasing matches with our eye movement. First we start here looking at the uh, products and products names and everything and we go into detail and look at the uh, how much uh, what is the price of this. And if you look at this the as we were discussing the third quadrant more or less it comes here it is almost vacant most of the informations are not there and uh, the informations are uh, uh, here there are uh, no such informations which are uh, processable and uh, which needs users attention, but here there are more uh, more uh, important informations like add to cart and purchase now which which is persuasive and uh, uh, e-commerce uh, site has to be um, uh, the, uh, the add to cart button and purchase button has to be uh, very uh, very much visible and but that comes after checking out the products uh, detail and all this uh, uh, things. So, fourth button or uh, 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 the buttons it uh, of add to cart and uh, buy now is uh, there in the fourth quadrant, it could not have been the other way around. So, it could not uh, be placed here, first you can, uh, can you cannot add to cart and uh, then look at the product. So, that does not happen. So, this also corresponds to, uh, to our users eye movement and the way we look at. So, we will also uh, introduce you uh, to the one equipment that is eye tracker, you must have uh, heard about this. So, uh, the way uh, this is like a glass and user wa wears it and uh, user testing can happen based on that and uh, we can take the uh, data of where people are looking at. So, uh, in which uh, directions user are looking at and which are the more um, interesting areas, uh, it can, it can uh, tell you in terms of uh, and it can uh, generate a heat map. And from that heat map, map in, you can decipher the uh, areas which are more uh, most important. So, similar things has been done by Jacob Nelson, it is based on Gutenberg's di diagram and he have tested some of the informative uh, page layouts. Uh, Jacob Nelson has been uh, is tested uh, with some uh, users. So, he have given uh, three different uh, pages. And um, he have tested with eye tracker, and this is a heat map generated um, from this eye tracker uh, testing. So here we can see um, uh, the heat maps. Here uh, the blue and the lighter, the cooler color depicts uh, there are less amount of time uh, devoted on this um, area, and the the um, higher the um, uh, the, the hotter colors are uh, depi uh, is uh, depicting there are more amount uh, amount of uh, time uh, 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 devoted here. So, these has higher attraction values. So, from here it also says so this part is important and here uh, in this case there were no uh, such information over here. So, it is not um, uh, visible in this case you can see one uh, this is highlighted and this is also highlighted. So, first quadrant and second uh, the fourth quadrant is also highlighted and we can see some uh, in the second uh, uh, two different fellow areas there are also some spots. So, here from here he is saying uh, because our reading habit uh, uh, we scan the um, informations 
and we read some uh, lines and then jump and again start reading there. So, Gutenberg's diagram happens in multiple um, uh, segments and multiple breaks. So, here we start reading and then we uh, skip some uh, areas and then, then again start reading from here so, so that we do not miss lot of information. So, we start concentrating and then concentration again uh, um, uh, starts after, um, uh, after few lines. So, here you have div, um, given a model of F shaped uh, diagram. So, we start reading then skip something and then again start reading so that uh, in terms of scanning, uh, in terms of fast uh, and quick scanning. So, this is uh, described here. The next is rule of third, we um, um, uh, some of um, us we are uh, who, who uh, are also associated with photography and visual communication might, uh, might have seen that in camera also this kind of grid appears. So, so that it uh, develops the uh, complete rectangle into 9 different segments and here after the, uh, uh, dividing, so these kind of uh, segments, so these 4 dots, if we place our um, uh, main subject or focal points in these 4 dots, uh, a composition looks interesting and interesting in terms of um, like if you if you po, um, uh, put your composition, if you uh, put your main focal point of the composition directly at the center, all the other background becomes dull because our eye uh, in a in a pictorial composition. Uh, before we are discussing about the Gutenberg's principle and F-shape diagram was uh, text heavy. So when we are reading text, our mind behave differently, and when we are looking at a picture and the image we know that we do not need to read it and we do not uh, we, uh, we just perceive then our uh, eye uh, behave differently. We look at the center first. So, if our uh, main focal point is at the center we skip lot of things uh, which is there around the uh, main subject. So, other uh, part of the um, image does not have does not get much emphasis and our eye does not move. So, um, one of the criteria of a good composition is uh, the user's eye should move around the composition and all the information should be read. So, if we give our um, in, uh, main uh, focal point at the center, so uh, the rest of this uh, part gets uh, 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 does not get the highlight and our uh, eye does not go. But if we get, uh, give our um, uh, subject areas at these 4 points, we start moving uh, the users start moving their eyes because they are not at the center and they are at the corner. So, they start moving in a different direction and the complete composition uh, gets a uh, holistic understanding. And it is also perceived that if we uh, put our uh, um, main subject uh, here and the composition looks bal uh, balanced and it also uh, gives some interest towards the user. And there are some leading lines, if there are uh, different lines, if they are leading towards one line and uh, if they are diagonally leading towards uh, one corner, uh, it adds towards some dynam uh, dynamism in the uh, composition. And then we know the uh, golden mean proportion, if we find, uh, if we establish a golden mean uh, ratio in our composition, in, in our graphics and um, in our um, photography, then it looks interesting because these kind of uh, shapes Fibonacci series and golden mean uh, ratios uh, looks uh, uh, interesting and uh, perceives as, as a uh, good composition and uh, people f uh, feel these compositions are aesthetically in, um, better. Even in uh, the architecture, Greek architecture Parthenon, uh, the, this kind of proportions has been uh, established. And because these proportions uh, are interesting, because these kind of proportions are found in uh, uh, in nature. So, you, you can uh, think about a conch shell which also um, uh, uh, has this similar kind of pattern and even this kind of rectangle, golden mean rectangle, the ratios uh, can be found in uh, human body. Uh, you can now uh, check Vitruvian man by uh, Leonardo da Vinci, his uh, Vitruvian man is de uh, derived from this golden mean ratio. And also if there are anomaly, if there are uh, some interesting uh, anomalies and uh, different uh, things in the pattern, then uh, things uh, looks interesting for uh, here you can uh, perceive this as a pattern and here only one color is different only one element of uh, design is changed over here and uh, 
so it looks interesting and it uh, gives some uh, elements of some focal point in the uh, um, composition even you can see it's also there in the um, um, uh, applying uh, the rule of thirds principle then we come to the gestures principle gestures is a uh, gestures principle evolved from the psychology and uh, it's um, it's it's it talks about the unified whole and perception of whole to part or part to whole perception so there are uh, this uh, principles are um, evolved from a german um, psychologist gestures in 1920s so there are five things one is similarity then continuation uh, then three is closure then four is proximity and the five is figure and ground relationship so we'll discuss each and everything uh, uh, gradually one is similarity um, is like objects which look similar are perceived uh, um, similarly uh, perceived as a group and if there are some something which is different uh, and perceived as anomaly and which is the other thing so here if we look at this uh, image so these three all these th um, uh, um, icons or pictograms um, uh, explain, explains a uh, abstract form of human uh, gesture. So these three things has a visual similarity. So they are in a group, and the other thing is um, other um, iconographic uh, um, depiction of a abstract abstract depiction of a human figure is uh, represented differently. So he is not the part of the group of these people. The similar thing happens over here. So this is the anomaly of the other thing. So these all. Uh, things uh, based on their colors uh, are grouped together and these are perceived as a different entity. The next is the continuation. So, if there is a continuation of um, line, continuation of color and uh, then we uh, perceive things in a continuity. For example, here uh, all these line, uh, uh, small human uh, beings and all these um, uh, linear Im uh, imageries which is uh, like a border they are uh, in a continuity they are leading towards the sa same uh, line so we were also talking about the same fate and the, uh, if there are uh, felt lines um, occult uh, felt uh, lines are there so those are uh, uh, also um, uh, leads us to a perceiving uh, uh, holistically so those uh, things are also uh, discussed in uh, uh, principles of design earlier then we have closure Be, uh, based on the uh, theory of closure we perceive things together for example the dodge uh, logo all these uh, shapes are different they are not uh, joined together so this one and the, this uh, shape they are different but together they uh, communicate the head of a bison even the uh, wwf logos uh, panda if you look at that uh, the pandas all this um, uh, black patches they are different uh, shapes only but together we uh, can perceive that than that as a panda even uh, the formula one's logo the one is written over here based on the free, uh, figure ground relationship the white part is also perceived as f so we read the letter uh, uh, f and the uh, digit one together based on the figure ground relationship of and this closure but if we uh, if you mentally um, um, delete this part and uh, make these these uh, these white shape and these white shape uh, far. Then we cannot perceive this one as a uh, uh, the background doesn't communicate as a uh, the uh, the letter uh, the the digit one. So uh, be based on their um, um, closure, so uh, the uh, digit one is perceived. Even in proximity, we can uh, also. Uh, uh, think about IBM's logo. So IBM's logo; these are nothing but rectangles. But based on the proximity, they uh, together uh, communicates the uh, letter I, B, and M. Other than, uh, uh, otherwise, they are just um, uh, some assortment of uh, 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 rectangles. And how they are uh, sequentially arranged, they, and that's also important here. So, in terms of figure ground relationship, uh, we can uh, think about Asher's painting, which has been again discussed uh, earlier. We, we can think about the figure and ground and their uh, dual um, existence. So, here we can uh, see these, uh, uh, this acts as a uh, uh, ground 
and this black birds acts as a figure, but this gradually transforms into the white birds. Here, the figure ground actually changes from this line. So, here the white patches are becoming figure and black patches are becoming the ground gradually this way. And if we go towards the left, the white um, uh, areas of the composition is becoming the background and the black areas of the uh, compositions are becoming the figure. So, after discussing uh, the uh, semiotics and the uh, principles of visual perception, in the next uh, uh, class, uh, next module onwards, we will move on to uh, more detail about visual trains. We need to also discuss the visual trains, how they evolved over the time. So, for in the next uh, uh, two uh, uh, lectures, we will discuss about the contemporary visual trains. So, what are the visual language of today's time? And then uh, after that, uh, we will also discuss the uh, different uh, digital media uh, platform, what are the different uh, technology advancement is happening. Thank you.